recording now? We are recording now. So welcome to Teacher Teaching Teachers. And um, thank you, thank you for the students who have come. Um, Jessica Early is here, Christina Cantrell, Joel Stedronsky, and um, welcome Vishnu and Nate. Why don't the two of you introduce yourselves first? Vishnu. Um, my name is Vishnu. I'm an eighth grade student at a Williams and Mr. Donsky's class. And what else do you do? Um, I play volleyball and um, I like to do math contests, partly because my mom introduced me, but just because I also am interested in it. So I'm, I try to do those in my free time. Cool, cool. And Rohan's going to join us. Great. Nate, introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Nathan Zrebeck. I'm an eighth grader at WAMS, uh, and I work a lot with like 3D modeling and 3D printing. Oh, of course, just like everyone else says. No, that's cool, Nate. Cool, cool. All right, um, Jessica or Jill, sorry. Why don't you just introduce? Hi, I'm Jill Stadronsky, eighth grade uh, language arts teacher, Drew Adjunct, uh, NWP consultant. And uh, happy to be playing around with all the stuff you've offered us, Paul. And and Jess, I think I met you on another meeting, and I loved your book. Um, I, I wish we could write one that's the portfolio for the world that should be in the products. It's it's uh, it's guided me in a lot of my presentations. Appreciate it. So Jessica, you introduce yourself next, or Doctor Early? I'm. I'm Jess Early, and I'm uh, the director of the Central Arizona Writing Project, and I'm excited to be here with you guys. Christina. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Christina Cantrell. Um, I work Are you eating dinner? Is that I am eating dinner, dinner which is okay. why my okay. is It's off. okay to be rude. I just want to Now <laughs> that it's 8 o'clock, it's like yoga and then dinner. So they go <laughs> okay. rent to each other and TTT. Um, but yeah, I'm in Philadelphia and um, happy to be here. And nice to meet you, Jill, because I've I've been on some of the list with their, your students, but I don't think I've met you yet. So. Ditto. Oh, cool. Yeah, I keep telling Jill, you got to come. They want to meet the teacher who uh, these students are. Anyway, so it's it's great to have you all here. And Rohan. Um, Rohan, yeah, go ahead. Hello. Tell us who you are, Rohan, and what you like. Uh, my name is Rohan. I'm an eighth grader at WAMS. And uh, over the last few weeks, I spent some time uh, messing around with the thinking partners on now comments. Cool. Great. Um, and um, so good enough. Can I ask I'm... what WAMS stand for? Oh, good question. Good. Uh, What's the name of your school? Uh, William Madden Middle School. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. So um, here's what, here, I, if, if um, Nate and Vishnu, could you guys, Nate, you've been doing so much with thinking partners, even in the last couple of days. Do you want to just kind of break down some of the stuff you've been doing? I, I want to start with that sort of out there, wild, just crazy stuff that you're doing. Not, not crazy, but, um, and that, but I do want to get to Rohan. Um, and, and I want to say why. Let me say why right at the beginning. We we on UTT we get really excited about oh AI can do this right, but sometimes we don't follow through and think okay it can give you that feedback, but does it really help a writer do what they need to do? Um, is something that we have very little proof for thinking about right. And Rohan, um, I've sort of put you on <laughs> on blast here, let's put it that way. Um, we put your whole process on a page and looked at it really, really carefully. And I want to look at it together um, as well. <laughs> um, and so we want to get there. But Nate, describe some of the work you've been doing on thinking with Thinking Partners recently. You made an Elvis, for example. Do you want to? Uh, yeah. So a lot of the AIs we haven't been including enough in the prompt that we're giving it. So uh, I created a an AI that can like write the actual prompts for other AI um, thinking partners. So okay. 
Can you say more? What what do you put in that? So like the the Elvis one was just a test because uh, I asked it to like um, make just make a thinking partner that can mimic like a celebrity or famous person. So the prompt. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to share my screen? Yes, let's go there. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. We see okay. now comment. So. Okay, this is the prompt. Would, yes. Do you mind reading it? Yeah. Um, uh, description for an AI to create will be given to you. Give three ideas for name for the new AI. Um, so that is for like the first, like the name box right here. And then give a brief description of the main goal and the AI and what it will do. That's for right here. And then um, write a thorough prompt for the new AI to follow. Include instructions and clarifications that will help the AI achieve its goal. Uh, and give the AI character, uh, if it's like a fun AI, give it like a funny personality, like give it a personality to um, like help it in its goal. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was really interesting to see like how it was um, like approaching writing for another AI, because you could see the AIs were kind of like communicating a little bit because it was it was like talking directly to the AI and it was, it was addressing it. Like, can you show us an example fast enough? I'm not, um, yeah. I want to, I want to make sure um, others who like, this is not something your teacher has assigned you to do. Right? No, no, this but is just, separate. <laughs> so we're trying to understand what you're doing and it's really kind of fascinating, but it's kind of meta too, and I'm not sure everybody's following. So please ask questions, folks, uh, of Nate as we go here. But yeah. Nate, can I ask you as your teacher, did you, were you trying to think, were you just playing around with AI and, and the cool things it could do? Or were you trying to think, what if I helped it create the AI writing partners? Was it specific to writing or not? I was just curious. Because now that got me thinking like, how should I look at my writing and what kind of thinking partner should I um, create for my writing? Yeah, uh, me and Sam were working a lot with like thinking partners mimicking celebrities and like their personalities. So uh, I thought it would be better to see like how an AI, AI would approach it. Like if it was going to mimic a celebrity, um, like what kind of things about their personality and how they talk would it put in? Okay, but not specific to writing. You were just like just playing around with AI no, this, this is cool. Just for a tool. Cool. Yeah. I love it. I, lo I love where your mind keeps going. So did you write this prompt or did the AI write this prompt? The Elvis one was the um, AI wrote it. Okay. So what did you give it to get this result? What, what did you tell it to do? Uh, that, that was the um, previous prompt. It was like mm -hmm. mimicking a celebrity to give it a similar personality of the celebrity because it can, um, it can like go on Google and search for like the personality of like Elvis, for example. And it was able to include uh, details about Elvis, like right here, it has like lyrics from one of his songs, uh, <laughs> and like character traits for him to mimic. Cool, cool. Okay. <laughs> I, I so uh, I don't know what to do because I, I we could just kind of follow you for the rest of the hour, but I do want to get to um, I do want to get to Rohan's work as well. Is that okay, Nate? You yeah. kind of inspired us to think about this, um, but let's jump in to Rohan's as well. Um, can I share screen, Rohan? And Rohan, um, 
right on the table, if everybody goes to that where it says Rohan writes with GPT Thinking Partners, if you click on that, that'll take you to the right page on Now Comment and log in on Now Comment. And as we're talking, um, people may have things they'd like to add, or we may say, hey, that's a great thought. Can you add that in? I want to spend our time, though, and I'm going to share screen, looking at this together and kind of really working on it, too, if that's okay. Um, I will, will I, will I Can I quick um, interject? Yeah, yeah, please interject. Nate, you, I, yeah. Nate, I think you did stumble upon something though, where you could help the class. If you could create a prompt that would create other writing partners, um, like create a general prompt that would help them create new prompts about what should they look be looking at because that's one of the things everybody's struggling at do you understand what i mean like yeah that that was the idea for the developer ai to okay. like create like custom thinking partners yeah yeah i i want to talk to you more about that in, in school because i think that would be interesting remember because i had to keep brainstorming with kids what kind of thinking partner would you want because what kind of feedback do you want so you could say, you know, just thinking about all the things that a writer would need. Okay, go ahead, Paul, take over. No, so here, I, I'm, whoops. I uh, want to apologize. I do sometimes um, kind of jump in too fast, but I've been spending a lot of time looking at Rohan's work and I'd like for us, try to figure out a way for us to, and I'm adjusting my screen here, sorry to look at it together. So if everybody's on this page on their own, I wanna point out that Rohan has given us, and Rohan, uh, correct me if I say anything wrong here, he's given us six drafts that he created. Um, Jill, do you wanna describe the assignment? You have the description, you have it written here too, but. Um, I'm not sure you're sharing properly though. Yeah. Oh, I can't. Oh, thank you for seeing the. Kuma's face. Oh. Yeah, you're not showing the now comment uh, article. Sorry. Thank you for telling me. Screen. And while Paul's grabbing Start. that. Is it there now? Yeah, yep. I see it now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, I, I briefly wrote over on the right hand side what the criteria was. But basically, my students have a book thought journal and an inquiry journal to gather ideas and thoughts. And now we take a, a moment to stop. And just this is a, one of the things that I do that say something. Let's say something meaningful. What do you want to say about the things you've been reading about? So we call it the Say Something Meaningful article. And I have asked, after working with Paul a little bit, I've asked for the kids to then take their article. They did actually feed in their book thought journals to find roots and ideas and branches before they wrote. Then they wrote their articles to say something. And then they were tasked with creating their own thinking partner. What kind of feedback do you want for your article? And that was one of the things I was super excited about because what I have seen as a National Writing Project teacher, when we used to do writing circles, I would ask my kids to have give a memo to your writing group. What do you want them to look at? What do you want them to assess? And I've been always trying to get my students to be better assessors of their own writing. And just prompting and using my own article and sparking a bit what I might want my thinking partner to do really sparked to the kids. And they grouped together a little bit and then they brainstormed. And when they found out like that they didn't get good feedback, you know, that was my prompt back to them to say, okay, we'll go back in. What would you, why didn't you like it? What would you want to be more specific? So they kept really refining and revising their prompt. And, you know, some just are at the beginning with, you know, I don't know, maybe I just wanted to just give me feedback. And then they were like, I said, well, that's very general. What kind of feedback? So each person, would, each person was at a different level um, with this, but I can see how it could really help our students become much better assessors of their writing. And overall, I mean, we've got three of my kids here. I think this is just our real first, more than our toe, this really was our full body jump in compared to last year. 
-hmm. And I will use it for our next piece that we're going to do, which is going to be uh, a personal, not really interview, like a conversation. We're calling it a conversation with someone in our life. And then they'll write about, and that's going to be such a personal piece. It'll be interesting how they use AI for that. But um, they've each been creating their own prompts and partners. And on their article, they had to put what was the prompt, what feedback did it give, and what was their reaction to the feedback. Some kids did one partner, some kids do th two, three, four, five. Yeah, is, and, and Jill, I, I want to get to some of those other examples. Let's look at Rohan's a little more detail, if that's okay. Yeah? Sure. We're good with that. Rohan, Rohan can you, ex this is your first, I want to put, um, if you're looking through here, I did put the paragraphs um, where you can find each draft. And in between what you find is the results he got from AI. Oh. So we're going to kind yeah. of go slowly through one, but... Tell us what your first draft was about in general. Um, um my first draft was was about, was about um was like about all the wars in the U.S. and how they like affected like the people, I guess, a bit. Mm -hmm. Except, I, except, um, a lot of the feedback I got back from that was that that my facts weren't completely correct. Well, let let's go a little slowly through the first one, right? Um, and, and I just want to say that what I've done is I've compared all your different drafts and on the right side, we can see what changes you made in each draft, but that would take some time to go through. But yeah. the first thing you did here was you asked the text to self mentor, right? Oh, and I think I didn't put that one up, but, um, and you got feedback from that. Um, so you use one that existed already, right? And then you then you use one that I think was similar to the TikTok one. Yeah, I think yeah. I duplicated it because okay. I, I was curious. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I was curious to see how it how it would split it into scenes of every article to see if it'd be like exactly with each paragraph or something. Yeah. So, did that help you as a writer? You think or not? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. I just moved on from that. Okay. And so, then you went to a another one. It was another TikTok one, I think. So you yeah. were messing around with ones that existed already. And then you made it one called a simple advice one, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, like after looking through the text to self mentor, it just looked like a lot to read. So I just thought I should make a simple advice partner. Mm hmm. And I've actually copied the prompt here on the right side. Um, and it's simply act as if you're a kid about 13 years of old, 13 years old, make your feedback easy to comprehend and make it simple advice. Give them valuable advice on the main points. Do not give a summary of what you like about the story. Just go straight to the simple advice. Okay. Oh yeah. So actually, uh, for the first one where you say like, for the first one, I had put in the prompt as like, as talk like a first grader or something, because I wanted it to be really simple. But then it's then you see it didn't really turn out that well. So so, so, then, so, so you I got better. It. Yeah, I changed it to eighth grade. Okay. Um, and then you went to a inner voice one. Yeah. And I have that one here too. You wrote to your teacher. I have the, the letter, the email you wrote to your teacher. Right. But the prompt was what? You should speak with an eighth grade reading vocabulary level so it's not too hard for the reader to understand what you're saying. After reading through the article, I want you to identify the inner voice of the reader and find out their strive for writing this. You need to give three core points to help build their inner voice motivation. How did you decide three there, by the way? Um, you know? I mean, it just sounded like a good number. Like, like five is <laughs> okay. five is probably too many, and like two or one is like really less. Fair enough. The main reason I create, and then this is your note to your teacher, to to Mr. Um The main reason I created this thinking partner is that 
in our Say Something articles, I think it's really easy to throw facts on a page and many eighth graders have trouble building their motivation foundation for their of their writing. Right? Yeah, that, I had that problem with the end of my article. Like I was throwing everything in at the end because I didn't really have an inner voice. Thing. Okay. I thought that personally when he showed it to me and he sent me the email, I just thought, oh, well, how brilliant thinking like that, right? Because we always talk about what's the like why are you connected to this they come up with their own thoughts about what they want to write um after reading and kind of um doing inquiry about lots of different things they're fascinated with and so i i just thought he really took a piece of what he saw was missing in everybody's like what was your kind of inner motivation for this you know is it shining through and so i i you know nate and and obviously others have been really tapping into that and i thought this to me was really brilliant and this happened because of ai because it could it pushed them to think because they were getting feed, good feedback back versus being in a writing circle they could ask that of that partner but if the partner was not older they weren't able to give uh that kind of prompt back so th this to me is the gold right now that i'm finding mm -hmm. Interesting phrase here, though. I'm not sure I would use it, so I'm glad you tried it, um, Rohan. This idea of identify the inner voice of the reader. Um, and then what you came up with was that you need to be, you're seeking understanding, you're highlighting the impact of wars on people, right? And you want to promote change. Fair enough? Yeah. And then, think, go ahead. I think one of the things to explain, you know, part of all my running and, and you know, Jess, I think we're probably aligned in our thinking like this. And Christina, I'm not sure who you are, uh, what you um, deal with. Although I think all teachers want this is I have never strived to, I don't do an argument piece or persuasive piece or a narrative piece. I just want my kids to try to write real world pieces. And so in order to come up with an idea for this article, they just keep these book thought and inquiry journals. Um, and then we have stopper checkpoints. Okay, what do you want to say? Because we build into eventually a TED talk at the end of the year. And to do that, you have to keep stopping and thinking about what are you observing about the world? What are you caring about? What are you resonating about? And good writing comes from great ideas that they resonate with. So I imagine that inner voice, um, and Rohan, please, please um, correct me and redirect me because I have no idea. I was thinking in my head that was like, where did this like, idea come from? Or are you showing how I'm connected? Because we did talk about when we were writing these articles that this was not, I wanted them to break from what they thought might be a typical school and uh, assignment. I'm not asking you just to report about something, say something that is meaningful to you. And if it's meaningful to you, it will be meaningful to other people. Rohan, oh, so cool. Use inner voice. Could, could you articulate that or communicate that? Why do you think you came up with that? Well, I think I had a problem with my article was that I don't think I really had, I didn't really have like a very big inner voice. I was just writing down facts from the paper. And then at the end, in like one sentence, I just said something. So I was thinking like, I need to know how to like develop this. So that's why I kind of created it. Uh, do you want to say something? Did we really jump in there? No, I just think it's so oh, cool okay. that, and Rohan, that you recognize that is really powerful. Yeah. So Rohan also mentioned, he, you were just about to mention it earlier too, um, that uh, somebody told you you needed to check the facts because you're talking about wars and so forth. Is that right? How did you come up with the idea that you needed to do a fact check? Um, I think in one of, in in like my previous thank you partners, like I I was thinking I was saying like give me like in simple advice. One of the advice is like double check your facts and where they're coming from. Oh, or okay. Like, so that came from a thinking part. Uh -huh. I think yeah. Okay. 
So I was messing around and learning myself about how can we use AI for fact checking. And one of the things I did was I created a thinking partner um, for you, Rohan. We've talked about this before. But um, and what, it, what we did is we, I found the Congress, Congressional Research Service has a, a list of all of the wars of the United States and when the wars happened, who fought in them, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a link to it right here. Um, right. And what it does, though, is it takes Rohan's text and it compares it to that article. And then it gives a list of ac here's here's the things in your article that's accurate. Here are the things that might not be so accurate. And then it also says, hey, there's some other things for you to think about. And we kind of designed it to do that. Um, and we've talked about this before, but talk about you focused in on this second one. What's not accurate. You want to say more about that? Um, <laughs> uh, I folk like about how I focused on the second one. Yeah. Oh, so in in, in my simple advice partner or no? The, what I mean, like what what I, I'm sorry. There? You focus on what's not oh. accurate. You yeah. weren't you weren't intimidated by that, which I was worried you might be. <laughs> yeah, because I, I knew I knew I didn't really get my facts that correct. So, so. Yeah, I was really needing a fact checker, so, so yeah, and and it's also like really important when you're writing an article about the stuff that you don't like, get your facts wrong because that's like really bad, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um. Then, so then you asked it a couple of other things. You you made up a Rowan's evidence with Rowan's. Oh, what was Rowan's evidence? Rohan, so I'm sorry. Oh, Evan. Oh, this is the, yeah. This is the prompt you wrote, wrote for this. Oh, I, 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 I was thinking I, I might need to do some further research for my article. So I was thinking some what, some what research? Further research. Further research. Okay, so I was thinking ahead. like maybe if I can make a thinking partner that can get me like evidence I'll need for this article. So then I put that in the prompt, and then um, but then. It was like really wasn't connected to like the web because it's like a like no, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So that really. But it does work. give you some ideas, but not directly. Like most of them were like really long books, but that's not really the kind of resource resource I was looking for. Okay. And then you made your own fact checker. Tell me about that. Yeah, I I, I was I really like your fact check, but I was thinking like. What if you're not writing about wars? What if you're writing about like something else? So I just like created another fact checker to see if it did okay. And how did it do? I think I think it did pretty good, but in my case, uh, your fact checker would have been better since it's more specific. But like for uh, maybe for other people, this might be okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna come back to this one. You graded your 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 um. Yeah. your drafts, but you went back and graded the first draft again at the end of your whole process. Talk a little bit about why you did that. Um, oh, and yeah. I'll, I'll click on what, what grader is supposed to do. Now, and I want to ask, these categories, one, two, three, four here, do you see on the right side? Organization, yeah. grammar. Are these your ideas or did your teacher give you these? Um, In class, me and my group were supposed to make a rubric for mm -hmm. our our essay so i put in my i put in our rubric okay they, they had to come up with i said just four areas and the top one would have to be the thing that you would think would be the most important um and i just gave them one organization but i said what are four traits you think of any good writing piece cool and were you intending and that for ai in. Jill? Or, no, yeah. I, I just wanted to get them to think about before, like in while they were dealing with the AI, like what do you think makes something a good piece of writing? Cool, cool. What's necessary? And what would, if if it didn't have that trait or quality, um, how would something fall apart? You know, what would be the first trait that would fall apart, you know, or um, what would be the first trait that would be the most important? Like if you don't have great ideas, didn't matter how grammatically correct you were or organized because great ideas, the article would fall flat. 
but I don't, I don't necessarily, you know, obviously, well, my kids know, right? I really wasn't yeah, sure. per se grading. My whole idea was feedback in the class, no grades. Sure, sure. So the, um, Rohan, I, I asked you, think about why did you go back and, and score, let's call it score and say, yeah. but score your, your first draft again? Uh, I wanted to see how much I improved over like my drafts. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so it took us all that much time to get to the second draft. Um, so I need some feedback here. Um, do we need to go faster, slower? Do we need to answer questions? Please speak up, especially Christina, Jess, um, and you know, Joe as well. But we can look at the second draft now and see some changes and see what happened. That sound okay? Good the to me. Yeah, the pace seems good to me. I just want to... Um, you know, say it's great to see this kind of reflective work as you're working, Rohan. So thanks for sharing this. Yeah. And honestly, I have to say, I mean, I have the other children here, but really it forced every child to take whatever, you know, wherever they were as the assessor of their writing, and it really raised their assessment skills of their own writing. And with each prompt and then sharing each other's and talking to each other and saying, oh, my partner did this, I got back this. It really was such a fast spiral that I'm very excited to see that with each piece. Now I could have stayed on this piece and we could have you know, done 10 partners, but for me, it's like, okay, let's move on to the next piece. Let's play with the partners. We'll get to the TED talk. We'll get to the NPR podcast. And then, um, with, with each one, they can be playing with different things. But I, I, like I said, to me, this was gold. I, you know, I don't want to be premature in saying this, but 17 years in the classroom, I have not been able to get them to think at this level about their writing without AI. It really would be if, if I had a college kid connected with each one sitting with my student, mm -hmm. I would not be able to. And it, and the important thing is like, they are thinking differently about their piece. So it's not me prompting and saying, oh, you should go fact check. Now they have that. So that's a transferable skill. Oh, now Rohan always knows every time I go and I write something, hmm, where's my evidence from? Are my facts accurate? So that's to me is like, that's the goal. That's that's like, I, I this is going to change writers. Yeah. And, you know, Paul, originally, right, we were always working with your partners last year. <laughs> Who's clapping? Which was, <laughs> uh, which was um, great. And I just, I didn't even know to them coming up with the prompts. And I did have to say that the prompt and the thinking partner, and I tried to go out to chat GPT and use the same prompt outside of the thinking partner twice. And it did not give me the feedback that your thinking partner did. So I'm not sure what else is in the background of that. I, it's, but it was, it's probably what, what's, what's it, what's yeah. not in the background, but so all right, okay. there are lots of guard guardrails, and I'll just say this really, really, it's kind of fast, I hope. But the ChatGPT, like it, it takes the response that comes back from the um, AI model, and it um, changes it so that it is, um, it becomes more corporate, more robotic, more right. Um, we kind of interrupt the process and say instead of that, go to the congressional record and check the congressional record. So in some way, we make it a more pure experience. Let's just put it that way. Okay. But, but please keep testing back partner. and forth because we need to learn all that. Um, yeah, yeah. I want, And I'll have ahead. actually the students play around with that because I wanted to really see what was the difference. Although I, I have to say for students having a site and you know, I think even something more than now comment where they just had all these different thinking partners, it, it just, uh, you know, I can't say enough. It's it's really great. So I want, but I can I, I just say to uh, really yeah, fast. Yeah, please, I'm please, sorry, Paul. Yeah, I, no, I want well, to just yeah. to me. It's like I, I can't remember that. I am horrible at remembering the names of fancy scholars or whatever. But there's um, a famous composition theorist, and she talks about like this interior di dialogue that writers have, mm -hmm. and it seems like this is modeling that. And a way that like as teachers, it's so like what you're saying, Jill, for 17 years, like you, you do all sorts of things, but how do you model the, 
sort of stopping and thinking and reflecting and talking with your piece and questioning it. And um, so it's really cool to see this because I think that's the closest I've ever seen yeah, to think, getting that mental yes, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And it's that it's that inner editor. How do you develop the inner editor yeah. of it? And and I it's it's di very difficult because unless you're sitting with the kid, they can't think like that. I well, developmentally, been able to most kids don't think that way. So naturally, because developmentally, that's not where they're at to get outside of right. and reflect. So it's really powerful that this helps with that. Yeah. One of the things I want to throw in is that it is worth noting as much as we're praising the AI, um, there was a teacher giving the assignment. So there's there are humans in the loop. There was a teacher saying, come up with the rubric, right? So it, it wasn't just AI. And, and there was also me as a human um, meeting Rohan and saying, you want to fact check, try this, right? So I think right. all the places where no, humans are in the loop is, is an important part of it too. It's yeah. the marriage. Yeah. It's yeah. the marriage. Okay. Um, I, and again, <laughs> if we had a whole seminar, we could spend more time time on this. But I do want to point out, um, so I looked at, for example, the second paragraph here. And notice, Rohan, that you you changed, you had a ran in, in the sentence here, and you changed it to a rack. So you're kind of correcting things as you go. But there are kind of deeper level stuff you're working on, too. Do you want to talk about what you were thinking about when you were doing these drafts? Do you, yeah, so... I mean, at the start, I don't think I knew much about this. Like, mm -hmm. I was just putting in stuff that I heard, like, my parents seeing on the news and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, I got, like, Iran and Iraq or something mixed up and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So then uh, looking at the fact checker, it told me, like, what I needed to change. So I was just, I was just working around and changing that. Mm -hmm. And in the third paragraph, you had something that said... The they lost the Vietnam and Korean yeah. War. You yeah, I, about that? yeah. I think uh, your thinking partner said that uh, like it 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 was they did not lose the war. It was much more economically complicated than that. So I just I just wrote withdraw instead. With yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna review. It's sort of like um. Uh, what, what I got to at the end and what I'm worried about, Rohan, is that you got really, really focused on doing all the fact checking. And I wonder if you lost your the heart of why you were doing it. But it's just a question. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to respond to my saying that. But, but, um, I, but it's I, something I, I want to look at. Yeah. yeah go ahead. I think I think I have to do that because you can look the end of my article is pretty abrupt. Mm hmm. Like, just one sentence paragraph. That's the whole inner voice of the article. So right. I think I should. I, I if I I could have I should have like worked more on that. Uh, like I mean, getting everything right is I think in my in my point of view is like it, like in my article is much more important. It's it's like equally as important to like get all my facts right because I'm writing about like economics and like the wars and stuff. So you're writing about big stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and can I say, in, in my classroom, we always talk about stop and we're going to say something now. And you are allowed to be incomplete in your thoughts. You may build this into your TED Talk. This may build into a 3,000-word article. You may continue this next year. So they know at some point, I even say to them, I don't worry about, we are going to try to you know bring this to some kind of closing, but you could close it with all sorts of questions. Um, but because they were running with the thinking partner so much, I just didn't want to end it. Yeah, sure, sure. So, Rohan, would you mind reading this last sentence here? Um, this is the last sentence of the first draft, in my true opinion. In my true opinion, the U.S. shouldn't be scared if anyone has the richest and the most powerful country in the world. The fact that the higher ups get scared, the screen that this country is weakening by the day we have to defend each other, each other and stand up together. How do you feel about that sentence? I think that's like my entire inner voice. I should have like put hints of it throughout the article. Hmm. 
I think throughout, I, th I, I think I, I changed the last. Yeah, I just I want to be so really clear here that th this article doesn't have to be done. You could pick it up and, yeah, you, know, you could bring it and bring your inner voice back through. But yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? I think throughout like the article, I was very, sh I was very unsure about my inner voice, and I kept changing. Like the last sentence was changed every single time. I know. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, and we can look at that. But so, what were you trying to do with the last sentence then? Do you think why did it change every time i i think like i think most writers like get their inner voice at the start but what i did is i ended up putting up so many facts on the page that i needed to close it and then like i just needed something that would suit the article but like it was hard finding that thing that would suit the article suit everything on the page so what i noticed is a lot of your facts yeah. and as you did more research and as you got to know things more like about Vietnam and about Korea, um, maybe about Iran and Iraq, um, and about China, right? Yeah. You, it became more complicated. Yeah, it did. More nuanced. Yeah, so talk about that a little bit. Like, like I started from base ground zero, and then every every time I found, a, found in a new fact, it, it, like it corrected my article. I got a bit farther away from where I wanted the article to be. And then every time I did that, it just got very complicated, I guess. But you did, you do have those, you do, you're pretty accurate, right? Yeah. You got it pretty accurate. I mean, I, I don't want to take away from that at all. That's a good thing. <laughs> no, it is yeah, right, yeah. Rohan, because one of the things in this class is I really want I worry in school that we teach such formulaic writing and we bring kids to try to come to a conclusion that when you write about anything that's really difficult, that's worthwhile saying that's not just a summary back for a teacher and for a grade, they have to struggle. And so I love that all of these boys have truly struggled and recognized today we actually reflected on the process. We reflected on what do you now know as um, about the writing process and what do you now know about yourself as a writer? So do you, do you have some stuff like that you could share if you share screen? We could we could pull off of that and go to that. Is sure. That okay? We'll do any of the boys want to share that. What have you learned about yourself as think about those two questions we kind of focused on today in class? What do you now know about yourself as a writer? What are you understanding? And what are you understanding about the writing process? And anybody, Aditya, Nate, uh, Vishnu, is he still here? Rohan, anybody wants to jump in? And guys, it's great to have you here, but we need to get some girls from your class here too. <laughs> but it's it's great to have you. I'm not complaining. Who wants to so, say? Does someone want to say? Uh, uh, if, if no one else is going, I guess I can go. You can start. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, I think from this, from what, I, from what I learned in this, in this experience, is that, um, at the start of your article, you should really brainstorm a bit, so you don't end up like writing random facts. You need to like, uh, you need to like know your inner voice at the start, so you can start writing it from then. And you don't how, would you, how would you do that then? If you were going to talk to another kid, how would you do that? What did you realize or recognize? Um, like, like, do you mean if I was going to like rewrite the article or something? Or if you were telling a kid advice next year? Yeah. What, what advice would you say? Do you think you just had to learn that through the process of actually going through this? Yeah, I, I, I think, I think like, I would give them, I would tell them that like, you should like brainstorm your idea, make sure it's really strong at the start so you don't have to like, you know, uh, worry about it a lot later. Nate, do you have your hand up or, no, sorry. So Rohan, one of the things I noticed you doing though is as you were working through the facts, you were also learning. Like the right, it wasn't just about writing, it was also about research and understanding and thinking. Um, so uh, that's all really a valuable thing too. Yeah. 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 Throughout the whole process, I, I think I did learn a lot like about like what's important in your writing and stuff. Like, 
and now like if I have something else like this, I know I, I'm not gonna I I'm pro I know what like thinking partners I'm gonna use. I'm not gonna like experiment with a lot more. I think. Yeah. I think, again, that's really one of the powers of this, but it's also, like I said, that's not just the AI, right? It's how do you set up a process in an environment in a classroom that allows students to struggle and figure out because then they actually, once they experience it, they will transfer those skills to the next project. I have a bunch of, um, Nate or Aditya, do you want to share anything about what you learned about the writing process or what you understood about writing going through this first article on Thinking Partners? Go ahead, Nate. Uh, you have to like currently go back and change your drafts and like it's okay to um, like refer back to sources multiple times so you can really get your point across. Nate, did, did you, you have think that you have before? Okay. Sorry, what? Paul. It's okay. What did you think about going back to multiple or the source of multiple times? What did you think before in the past that, or what were you taught in other classes? Like once you refer to a source like once in like one paragraph, you like can't use it again. <laughs> um, but like you, you need to elaborate more on each source and then you have to show how they like tie into your idea. Right, you can you can tap back into that source as much as you want. Um, Aditya, what did you learn or understand? You're on. Uh, there you go. Oh, his is mic wasn't working. Yeah. No, I don't know. Okay. Now you're muted. Now you're not on. Uh, well, Wait maybe going us. maybe going and out. Or sorry. Yeah. You raise, raise your hand when you want. Do you want me to show other ones, Paul, real quick or stop? To you can do that, yeah. Questions? Why don't you try? So these are, um, let me just go to uh, share the screen then. Mm -hmm. So you guys can see. Hi, Jake. Aditya, that's that's a good idea, what you're planning. Aditya shared a couple of weeks ago, he shared with us how he's using this on the debate team which was fascinating, <laughs> but yeah. Can you guys see mine? Not yet, you're not sharing yet. Maybe okay. you need to just hit share, there you go. Now we can. So this is, um, I don't know, I, I'm trying to think if Sarah actually has been um, in one of the calls, I kind of think she might've been. So Sarah wrote over here on the right, I had a bunch of questions to try to spark reflection. She first listed five ways her article changed. After reviewing, I added more information about how not having education affects people. After reviewing with peers, I was able to have a rebuttal to some of my points, which helped to make my points more developed. Looking at my peers' articles on Canva helped me to organize my paragraphs better. After reviewing my article, I bolded the questions I used to make them stand out more. After reviewing with peers, I fleshed out my points more and added more support. I learned that writing is more than just putting words on a paper and it's more than just following the formula that your teacher gave you to get a grade, or I learned that writing has meaning. This experience was actually pretty fun because I got to write about something that means a lot to me. My hope is to write more and to write deeper, to really understand what I'm writing about. When writing my next piece, I will use AI as a tool because it was really helpful this time around for rebuttal. I understand that I need to be passionate about what I'm writing about or else it doesn't flow. I understand that the writing process isn't easy. The process takes time and effort. Reading out loud helped to see where my mistakes were and how it flowed. I put in all my class time and time at home. I was willing to change my piece, not completely, but I took the advice of others. Cool. Um, and so everybody has reflections like that. Do you want me to read another one? Sure. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning from it. But Aditya, are, are you able to talk yet? I don't see him in the in the call. Oh, okay. Yeah. This one is uh, Sophie. She wrote, these are the five ways she changed her article. I changed my editing, ending to be shorter so it followed the guidelines. We were trying to stay within 500 words just to force them to be concise. 
I changed the start of my article and added a metaphor about carrying a backpack. I changed the word powerful because I repeated it too much. I changed the middle of my article to be more heartfelt than robotic. I changed my explanation after my second quote to a longer version because we still had more thoughts. Writing will always be hard, for me at least. One thing that I do hope for is to get better. I want ideas to come easier. But I also feel writing should be hard. But I find I want to create more inspiring pieces that make people think about the world, make them change, only for the good. Something that I would do differently as well as find a topic that I could write more about. It's really hard for me to find a piece that I connect to at the moment, which makes me think about how my writing connects to dance. In dance and writing, I have so many ideas and there are always... They are always sad or gloomy. I hear all my dance teachers say I'm a modern dancer at heart, and that connects to my writing. Writing a more heartfelt piece can help expand my writing. This means if I cry, I know my article is something I care about, and I hopefully convince others to care about it as well. I love writing, and some things I've learned about the writing process can make that love better or worse. The writing process is kind of like a storyline to me. It starts off with an idea then expands into a piece, but the climax is always a final decision. And then the story is written down and done. The writing process is definitely hard, like I said before, but it's fun to realize what comes out of that hard work. To continue, talking to peers is super helpful because just reading your story aloud can find mistakes or spelling mishaps. But when I hear different perspectives, it opens up more ideas and sparks to make my writing better. If someone has a good idea, I'm always able to change my article because I hope they give their honest opinion to make my writing more powerful. The more ideas I have, the more time I want to put in. I love writing freely as well. So I read it to my parents. I read and I write. Wow. So interesting how many, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it was reading interesting. Aloud, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no it's fine. I, I, I want, Aditya, you worked on getting your microphone working. Can you talk? Just yeah, I just switched computers. Cool. So so jump, jump in. What are you thinking? So... You know, about the writing process, I was kind of thinking it's almost like weaving like a garment or something like like uh, your writing will never truly be complete. Like, there's always going to be like a tiny like hole somewhere or the other, like, you know, tiny little pockets. You can't have a complete. It's really hard to have a complete article. But like this, at least AI has helped me kind of like find the major holes, like the major uh, areas where my writing is lacking. So, for example, I was writing a piece about, uh, you know, how kind of how there haven't really been any great movies this year. And then about how, like, uh, independent creators, especially this year, have kind of, I mean, last year have kind of really shined. Uh, so I was uh, giving this, I was uh, using some uh, now comment and I was taking some feedback. And one of the feedback pieces it gave me that really stuck with me was uh, that... <clears throat> Uh, I was I forgot like one thing I didn't mention in my piece at all was that it's not exactly an easy road like there's so many creators who either quit or aren't able to make it uh, as an independent like YouTube channel or something like that and I kind of added in a little bit of that right but I also think that like feedback from other people is important not just our AI feedback like Mr. Dronsky even gave me some feedback uh, about my piece like about how uh, I kind of need, I, I should kind of approach it from like, uh, what did you say, Mr. Ronsky? Like, uh, I kind of put how it affects us. Yeah, like, why, why should we care? Cares. Why should we care? Yeah. So I feel like those were the two biggest improvements I made. And they also tried to like, you know, um, get it to make some grammar. Like I asked it, okay, uh, where can I improve my grammar and things? And it did give me some suggestions, but I found that like half the suggestions were things that I shouldn't improve, like, you know, consistently capitalize and things like that. And then the other half were like, make sure that this this thing is spelled correctly all the time. Even though I had no spelling mistakes, what's uh, I even though I had spelled that word correctly the entire time. And I kind of find found that interesting about how like uh, you you kind of still need that human input. And I was also thinking about like how I like to reflect on my writing, like. I don't really like, I'll jot down a few notes or something, but I feel like I really enjoy talking with someone else when, when reflecting on my writing. And I feel like AI is different because if, even if it's like actually like you're writing out your ideas, like, like reflecting and uh, using AI kind of uh, almost, it, it almost feels like talking to a person in a way. 
it kind of simulates that. Not a, not to the extent a human can, but I definitely enjoy like using AI to help improve my piece more than I would just like staring at the piece and then like just trying to think of something myself. So in the last three minutes, you've said you like talking to people more, and then you said talking to AI is like talking to people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which like, is fine. It, it, I, I'm just I'm pointing out that it it is all meshed together in in good ways. I hope. But go ahead. What did you want? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking like that where um, talking like using AI uh, kind of feels more personal. I like I like the AI is kind of almost having a conversation with you. I I, I enjoy like that aspect of like generative like large language models. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I uh, we're going to keep learning from y'all as, as many times as you can come here and talk to us. We uh, totally appreciate it. Um, the um, document that we just barely touched on has a lot more stuff there to look at and think about. Um, I, I hope some researchers look at it too, by the way. Um, so um, thank you, Rohan, for sharing that and everyone else for sharing your thoughts. And I'm sorry we don't have like six more hours for everyone to talk. Um, and Jake, hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you all. Anybody want to say a last word? Feel free. We're going to jump off. Yeah. I just want to say thank you. And um, it's really awesome to hear from you all and appreciate um, the work you're doing and uh, the guidance you're you're. In, or the way that you're you're sort of providing all these tools still seems really strong too like i like paul was saying you notice like the read aloud the talk to peers talk to ai you know it's like a whole mix of things that they seem to be engaging so that seems really cool and um i guess i was also thinking about the sort of how we write to learn right it's like sometimes we don't know what we're trying to say until we get into it and we start writing the thing and then we're like oh yeah that's right <laughs> so mm -hmm. i don't know it's complex this inner voice development so i think you guys are doing great work on it thank you all we'll pick this up next week thanks talk to you soon bye thanks everybody bye 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 see you guys in class tomorrow <laughs>